Welcome to Eva India Insights podcast. I am Pallavi, your host for today, and we are delighted to present another episode of the ongoing Interim Budget 2024 series. Tune in for profound insights spanning from the macroeconomic landscape to direct impact of budget on individuals, taxpayers, and businesses. In the context of Interim Budget 2024, highlighted by the Honorable Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman, the focus is on four key aspects. Garib, Mahila, Yuva, and Anadatta, which stands as a testament to its significance for our larger economy. Today, we are joined by Sonu Ayer, EY India Tax Partner of People Advisory Services with over 27 years of experience. She advocates reforms and regularly contributes to events on mobility, tax, and HR consulting. Sonu, thank you for joining us and welcome to our podcast. Many thanks, Pallavi. Pleasure to be on this podcast with you. Let's dive into our first question. Both individuals and corporate taxpayers were expecting some relief in tax rates, but the finance minister has adhered to the fact that it is a vote on account. She did extend certain tax benefits to startups and investments made by sovereign wealth and pension funds and tax exemptions on certain income of some IFSC units till 31st March 2025. Do you think the desired relief will provide once the full budget is presented post-elections? So, Pallavi, hard to tell. I mean, this is for the governments to decide what relief they will give and what they won't give. So, this was a vote on account budget despite expectations galore because it was being presented in the backdrop of elections that will kind of come up in April, May. Uh, yet the finance minister stuck to the vote on account budget and there was no, uh, you know, tax rate cut, et cetera, as was being expected by common taxpayers. Whether the full budget of July 2024 to be presented by the newly elected government will provide relief or not is something that we'll have to wait and watch. Uh, from a personal tax standpoint, I think it is more about making the new tax regime attractive which is something that may happen when the full budget is presented in July 24. Thank you, Sonu, for your valuable inputs. Moving on, to further improve services to taxpayers, the finance minister proposed to withdraw long-pending tax disputes or on non-reconciled tax demands of up to 25,000 rupees till FY10 and up to 10,000 rupees for FY11 to FY15. How do you see this? And will taxpayers look forward to more such reliefs in future? Well, it's a significant step towards addressing dispute resolution. So imagine you had these multiple cases that were stuck since, you know, maybe many of them going back to 1962, as the finance minister alluded to her in her speech. And many of these taxpayers couldn't get their refunds of subsequent years because they had outstanding tax demands. Now, with this one-time cleanup, I think, A, it will free up a lot of time, a lot of unnecessary litigation will go away. So, a significant measure. And uh, dispute resolution has been on the government's agenda of tax reforms. So, we've seen multiple interventions like, you know, uh, APA, the Advanced Pricing Agreement, which came up for transfer pricing, uh, Bureau of Advanced Ruling that was set up. So, Dispute resolution clearly is a priority, and we will see many more such mechanisms set up in this roadmap for reducing dispute resolution uh, and dispute reducing tax disputes. So dispute resolution is a priority, as I said. Thank you, Sonu. Uh, India's direct tax collections have more than trebled in last 10 years. What steps can the government take to further enhance this? Also, what are the areas of improvement in taxpayer services? Okay, by the way, your question is really wide and there are two different parts to it. What can government do to increase its booty of tax? Uh, and it's as the finance minister noted, you know, the tax collections have trebled. And I think they've done some excellent, uh, uh, you know, measures, interventions using the triad of TDS, TCS, uh, you know, GST to be able to really uh, ramp up the tax collections. And that's what the statistics are also suggesting. So I think we will see further enforcement and tightening of these, you know, various laws to ensure 
that we are much more formalization of economy, much more formalization of transactions that are undertaken by taxpayers so that we are able to un bring in and step up further the tax collection. In terms of taxpayer services now, you know, you, it's like asking for the moon. The taxpayer will always want, uh, you know, ease of compliance, uh, no disputes, uh, clarity of tax provisions. So the work can happen on multiple facets. Uh, and one such step in this budget, uh, you know, which the finance minister has announced is this dispute resolution for taxpayers, making their lives simpler and not getting them get stuck and fight long battles for petty, uh, you know, tax demands. The other is in terms of you know how appeals and assessments are settled. We have uh, a lot of uh, pending appeals at commission appeals level that need to be uh, settled. So you know maybe interventions along the way to expedite disposal of these appeals would be helpful. Uh, you know from a taxpayer standpoint. Thank you, Sonu. Lastly, given the differences between the two tax regimes. Are there ways in which the new tax regime can be made more attractive? See, as far as the, if you look at the, you know, the genesis of the new tax regime, the government ventured onto the new tax regime by shaving off all deductions and bringing in lower tax rates. They didn't find many takers when they introduced it in its first uh, version. In the subsequent versions, the government has tried to make the new tax regime attractive by widening the slabs, lowering the tax rates, uh, in fact, bringing in standard deduction also to make it more attractive and comparable with the old tax regime. However, we, we, you know, we find we still have to get the data for how many people would have moved to the new tax regime after it was made the old, uh, after it was made the default tax regime over the old tax regime. So we'll have to wait and watch for that. But I think the, the path towards new tax regime is uh, fairly clear. The government will do its best uh, by measures of enforcement uh, to ensure that deductions that are being claimed in the old tax regime for which people want to continue with old tax regime are genuinely claimed. And we've seen this uh, you know, spate of notices where government is educating employers and employees to ensure that house rent allowance deduction that is being claimed by most taxpayers, whether that has been claimed accurately or not. So uh, I think what will happen to make new tax regime more popular is probably they'll have to ensure that the old tax regime gets less attractive for taxpayers. And that's when we will see bulk of taxpayers who continue to be under old tax regime move to the new tax regime. In terms of other ways, you know, to make new tax regime more attractive would be if they facilitate and enable tax credits to be taken in an easy manner in the new tax regime. That would make it much more attractive versus old tax regime where you have uh, cumbersome documentation to claim tax credits. The Thank other way so they could also think of streamlining and making uh, the new tax regime more attractive is to allow offset of tax uh, TCS that is uh, being currently collected on remittances for sent overseas to be offset against uh, tax due at the withholding stage itself. That will make the new tax regime much more attractive. So it's, it will basically have to, you know, as I said, do measures which make the old tax regime less attractive and more beneficial for a taxpayer to be under the new tax regime. Does that answer your question? Yes, so no. Uh, thank you for joining us today and sharing such valuable inputs to all our listeners. Gives us a brief idea on uh, the new interim budget 2024. Thank you. Many thanks, Pallavi. My pleasure to be with you on this podcast. Have a great day ahead. Thank you. On that note, we come to end of this episode. Thank you to all our listeners for joining us in this insightful discussion. Stay tuned for the next podcast. Until then, if you would like to, us to cover any specific topic for the discussion, please feel free to share it with us on our website or markets.eyindia at in.ey.com. From all of us at EY India, thanks for tuning in and goodbye. Thank you.